Anastasia, thank you for your nice lecture. And I also have some comments, some questions to you, but I'm afraid for time of my, my lecture, and if possible, I, I ask you after, OK? OK. Uh, dear President-elect of ERC, dear colleagues, uh, we all know that uh, uh, plastic closure of the nasal septal perforation is the most challenging, most challenging, most relevant chapter of rhinosurgery. And uh, for children, it is, it is more important problem because uh, this perforation can damage septum and uh, it may hit, it may uh, influence on growing of the external nose and on development of the middle third of the of the face. And uh, for example, you can see it uh, in in our practice. But it is uh, very surprising that uh, in literature uh, this problem in children uh, uh, just mentioned in the con context of uh, reason of uh, perforation, and but uh, there, is a there are very few publications about how to manage septal perforation in children. And uh, uh, at the same time, we just know according, according to to few publication, we just uh, can understand that the effectiveness of surgery of plastic closure of perforation in children much less than in adults. But at the same time, we can see a revolution of uh, septal perforation surgery in, in adults. And uh, modern trends are uh, using endoscopic control, using vascularized flaps, and uh, if possible, uh, two layers or full layers closing of the perforation. And we decided uh, a little bit to improve this, this situation, and we analyzed our series of children perforation. Uh, it was 20, 24 children. Uh, we operated them during, uh, during four, four years. Uh, all of them was operated under endoscopic control, and we used a different, different approaches and different techniques for closing the perforation. In six cases, we uh, used so-called intranasal bipedical advancement flap uh, in two patients uh, bilaterally, uh, in four patients in combination with the flap with uh, the inner surface of the cheek. Uh, the main idea of this, uh, of this technique is a very wide dissection uh, of the flap, mucoperichondrial flap, and uh, then we need to, to, to perform uh, incisions on the floor uh, of the nose and on the top of the nose, on the roof of the nose, and after this releasing incision, we can easily connect this flap without big tension and suture it. And uh, uh, usually we combine this surgery uh, with, uh, on, on, on another side of perforation with a flap from inner surface of the cheek, so-called sub, sublabial flap, mucosal flap. Uh, free temporal fascia flap we used only, only once. It was a patient uh, with a juvenile uh, arthritis and uh, he received treatment with methotrexate and uh, tocilizumab, and all of this uh, treatment and this diagnosis and this treatment, is the contraindication uh, for 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 surgery, and uh, uh, we we didn't want to 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 damage the remnant of of septum, and that's why we uh, choose the, the minimal the, the minimal invasive way, and we used. Fascia, a temporal fascia for closing this perforation. You can see it, uh, how we do it on this slide. In 11 cases, uh, we used uh, a Castelnovo flap, anterior etmoidal artery septal flap, uh, once uh, unilaterally and uh, 10 in combination with our, our technique that we called inverted edge technique. Anterior modal artery septal flap uh, give nice results in, in adults, but uh, authors usually use it for one side. In all cases, we try to close perforation on both sides. That's why we a little bit modified this this technique. We we called it cross septal return flap. It starts uh, 
the same as a, as a Castelnuovo flap uh, with incision uh, on the middle, uh, middle point of middle turbinate. The incision goes down on the floor, uh, then it uh, turns to the inferior meatus, turn anteriorly, and back to the septum. Then we dissect uh, uh, the borders of the perforation, and if we do it right, we can receive a very big flap. We can uh, even peel it out, out of the nose, you can see it. And then we do a small incision uh, uh, before, just before the perforation. And this flap on guided, guided suture turn on, on uh, uh, another side, opposite side of perforation. Uh, and uh, mm, this flap reach the posterior edge of perforation and we suture it along the perimeter. As a result, perforation closed one the same flap with an uh, anterior moidal artery blood supply uh, for both, both sides. And you can see results of this flap. We published this technique in, in, in literature. In 10 cases, we used uh, our, uh, our author's technique. We called it inverted edge technique. We a little bit changed the design of, of incision. We do it not uh, along the perimeter of perforation, but three, four millimeters aside. And then we can turn uh, these flaps into the perforation. And in most cases, this perforation completely closed. And after, after, this, uh, after this maneuver, we can receive the big wound surface. It is very good for Castelnuovo flap on the left on the left side, and you can see how it uh, looks immediately after surgery and how it looks uh, uh, after surgery in long-term period. You can see this transition between uh, remnants of septum and place where perforation was without any, any suture, without any scar. Uh, uh, of course, uh, for children's surgery, children's surgery is much more difficult compared to adults because the nasal cavity in children very, very, very small. And we have some, some tricks that uh, helped us to operate children. For example, temporary turbinotomy or conchotomy. Uh, we can cut the inferior turbinate until, approximately until middle of inferior turbinate. We don't damage uh, blood, blood, blood supply a lot because you know that inferior turbinate uh, received blood supply uh, uh, from posterior, uh, from sphenopalatina uh, artery uh, from past to anterior. That's why this, this incision uh, doesn't damage blood supply. Uh, then we can, we can create the flap uh, very easy because we received the volume. And then we can put this inferior turbinate back, suture it, and in, in two, three weeks, uh, nobody knows, nobody say that uh, there was something with inferior turbinate. It's completely, completely we can see completely healing. And uh, one more very important, important uh, step, it is preparation of the edge. Of course, it is very difficult to close such perforation because we cannot do inverted edge because this, uh, uh, this border should, be, um, should receive blood supply for, for this flap. And of course, previously, uh, for example, this perforation was very bad quality of border. That's why we uh, perform the temporary splinting of the perforation for two, three months, uh, and after this split, splinting, you can receive the very, very nice epitalized border, and we can operate this, this uh, perforation with the best results. Uh, as a result, in our, in our study, the overall efficiency uh, was 79%. We completely closed 19 from 24 uh, perforations. And uh, two, two residual perforation uh, occurred in the same, in the same uh, patient with a juvenile, juvenile arthritis. I, I, I said you about him. 
And uh, now we understand it was contraindication for, for this surgery. And if we exclude this uh, patient from our study, the efficacy was 21 of 24. Uh, almost 90% perforation was completely closed. And uh, if compare the different techniques, the best results we received uh, from combination inverted edge together with a Castelnova flap. Cross septal return flap uh, gave a little bit worse, but also good results. And uh, sublabial flap and free flap uh, was uh, completely, completely uh, failed. We published this uh, uh, study in, in the International Journal of Pediatric Otorhinolaryngology, and now it is a, the biggest series of children perforation uh, with, uh, with the best res results. So, uh, to sum up, I can say that using endoscope, using modern principle of septal surgery, the problem, children perforation, uh, becomes easier. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.